Hello everyone, today is the 14th of July 2023 and this is Wes Fryer and in this presentation I'd like to share with you some thoughts as well as some specific techniques for how you can diversify your social media use and all of these resources, I'm recording this as a video screencast but I'm also going to take the transcript of this and put it on my blog and I'm going to take the audio of this and put it in as a podcast. You can get to the links for those resources because probably the video will be the most helpful to actually watch to see these techniques by going to the shortened web link wfriar.me slash ideas. And as I'll probably say a couple times also, um, you can find the links to follow me and connect with me and learn with me <clears throat> on these different platforms by going to my main website, which is westfriar.com slash after. So what I'd like to do today briefly is, first of all, talk about a few metaphors that I find to be very helpful when we're talking not only about social media, but just about our information landscape today and media literacy, which is a broad term that I use for a lot of the things that I teach as a middle school teacher and I'm passionate about as an educator that touch on digital literacy and digital citizenship and other kinds of things that we'll hear discussed. I want to specifically talk about nine different platforms, and that's probably going to sound crazy, but for some of you watching this who are also an early adopter of technology, um, you may already be using all of these or, or many of these, but I hope to um, encourage you to at least try something new and also to be aware of these new platforms and some of the affordances. I won't have time in this presentation to exhaustively go through the comparisons, but at least to be aware of a little bit about the platform um, and why it can be beneficial um, and why you might want to use it. And then lastly, I'm going to spend some time going over some workflows. So I've connected my iPhone to my computer, and I'm going to be able to show you the actual process of sharing using these different platforms. And hopefully some of the tips and tricks that I'm going to share are going to help facilitate your process in doing this because... It certainly can be overwhelming. It can also be very time consuming, um, but I am finding it to be very beneficial to diversify, as the title of this presentation uh, indicates, my social media use. So this is the thesis of my presentation today, and that is that um, if we invest and diversify our use of social media, then we can have a creative and rewarding ideological return. And what I mean by that is, and I'll talk about the metaphor of investing, it is amazing and wonderful to be able to connect to other people in different parts of the world who have interests and passions similar to our own. And I could do page and pay upon page and story upon story of people that I have connected with over time. My life has been enriched in so many ways by social media connections. And yes, there is a dark side to social media and we hear so much about that, but there are also so wonderful, wonderful benefits, fruits, transformative experiences, and even just small things, getting an answer to a question, being able to find a resource, learning about another teacher who's teaching something that we're teaching, and being able to share lessons and ideas so many different ways. Um, and so my encouragement to you is to try um, and diversify so that you're going to be able to uh, c continue, uh, I think, harvesting rich rewards when it comes to the idea sharing and just the social networking benefits that we have. So... Um, again, as I mentioned previously, if you'd like to connect with me, I had a chance, oh, four or five years ago, I think, to travel to Cairo, Egypt, and the keynote speaker at our conference had this after page, and it listed the ways to connect. And so as things have become more complicated, fractured, as I'll talk about here in a minute, uh, I've found this to be helpful. So rather than just giving you one account, like my Twitter account, because there's other places I'm sharing now, if you go to westfriar.com slash after, um, I've actually just updated this a little bit more, and I will be talking today about what I will call four new social media platforms to include Mastodon, Blue Sky, K-12 Leaders, and Threads, and then the five, quote, legacy social media platforms. And that's in addition to places like YouTube and Yelp and things like that. But these are sort of the short form um, blogging, here's a post, like here's an article, here's a thought, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, and Twitter. And so you can get all those at westfriar.com slash after. 
All right, so let's talk a little bit about metaphors. Um, I think the metaphor of diversification is really a good one when it comes to social media. I've got a picture of eggs in a basket there, incidentally. Uh, Google Slides now has a uh, tool that can help you know generative use generative AI to create pictures, so thank you, Google, for that picture. I don't think you want to put, I want to put all of my social media eggs in one basket. In other words, today, I don't want to just be using Twitter. Twitter has become a dumpster fire over the past year. I am still continuing to use it, but I anticipate at some point I'm going to stop, and who knows if Twitter is going to implode and die. I think as long as a lot of mainstream journalists are using it, it's going to continue to be a viable platform, but there's a lot of reasons why changes that have happened in the past year have really increased the toxicity um, and the overall just negative experiences of people using that platform. And so I think just like we would talk about investing, you don't want to just buy a single stock and put all of your retirement savings you know, into that particular stock. You want a diversified plan. And I think today, we want to diversify as well because honestly, we don't know what social media platforms are going to take off and not even take off, but just be able to sustain, right? Because these platforms have to have viable economic models so that their hosting fees and their staff costs and, and everything, their operating costs can continue to be paid. And so I think it benefits us not only because um, we learn things, and that's this, the thesis of playing with media, which is something I've been an advocate for for a long time, but also because we sort of hedge our bets. We're not exactly sure uh, which platform is going to you know, endure. Um, we want to learn a little bit more about the different affordances as well as drawbacks of these platforms. Um, but we also want to make sure that we can continue to sort of harvest and gain those benefits of collaborating and sharing with others, and so we want to diversify. So uh, another metaphor I want to talk about is the attention economy. Um, There are really... um so many reasons why you know we live in a world today where um, the number one thing that is in short supply is time and it's our attention and so we need to be very aware of the dangers and the and the pitfalls that exist with social media right we can fall into you know doom scrolling and just spending an inordinate amount of time on our device sometimes when we're even face to face with our loved ones and our friends but overall, we need to recognize that today's, in, in, today's information environment, which many are calling an attention economy, I think Michael Goldhaber is the one who I read the first article who talked about this as far as an attention economy. We need, in some ways, a new skill set to cultivate as adults, as teachers, as students, um, because it is very challenging. There are good affordances and benefits to having such tremendous access access to information and to other people, but there are also challenges. And so in the attention economy, we need to, you know, figure out what those are. And I think some of the ways in which we figure those out, it's by collaborating. And part of that's through the diversification we can have with social media platforms. Another metaphor I really like is to talk about our information landscape as fractured and polluted. I've got a picture there, I think of, or maybe it's a generative AI image of the San Andreas fault, and then some factory pollution here. But there are There's always been different choices for information sources, but there are so many today and it can seem to be so confusing and so overwhelming. And again, one of the ways that we can deal with this and we can thrive, not just survive in this environment, is to be able to collaborate, to be able to find resources, to be able to share, to answer questions, um, and social media platforms allow us to do that. This is one of my favorite metaphors when it comes to information literacy. So I also already mentioned this. I like the metaphor playing with media. Back in 2013, I started this website called showwithmedia.com, and I continue to maintain that. And I think social media diversity is an example of playing with media. How are we going to become more capable and conversant with the technology uh, tools, the media communication tools of our day? It's like a sandbox, man. We've got to play in the sandbox. And so I think that as we have chances as educators to use these different tools to be able to understand their affordances, you know, this goes with this whole idea of playing with media because as we as we can play with these things in some sort of lower stakes environments, we can figure out, hmm, this is how this might you know, I might bring this into my classroom or how I need to have conversations with my students 
who are in the midst of this attention economy uh, with all of these different sources of, of information and navigating things, blurred lines between you know the personal and the professional, the stuff at school, the stuff at home, all of that, uh, playing with media can help us. Um, so a final one I want to share, and this is really what I've called this presentation in the past, discovering good ideas. This is a transcendent need that I think we're going to have forever, right? How do I find good ideas? How do I connect to other people, uh, especially people who are smarter than me? And there's a heck of a lot of those people out there um, who have ideas about, you know, things that I'm teaching, things I'm interested in. Um, And so that's where this whole presentation came from is thinking about ways we can use tools to filter information and be able to discover good ideas. And a lot of that is through connecting to other people that have shared interests and passions with us. So again, wfriar.me slash ideas will take you to my Google site for presentations and you can get to these slides, uh, this video, and, and all of these resources. All right, let's talk a little bit about platforms. Um, I'm going to categorize these into what I'm going to call legacy and new, and that may seem silly because a lot of these are very new. They they haven't been around a long time. But relatively speaking, um, you know, some of some of these plat- these nine platforms I'm going to talk about have been around longer than others. And so these are the legacy platforms that I'm continuing to use, and I think are good to use. But they have different issues around them. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, and Twitter. And I'm going to talk about each of these in turn. Um, And then the new ones um, are Mastodon, Blue Sky, K-12 Leaders, which is a wonderful new network that has been around for a little while, a few years, but I've really just started to be active in it in the last year. And then Threads, which is absolutely brand new from Meta or Facebook. Um, And so those are four new platforms that I am sharing on. So my dogs are here, and they may be barking because we have lots of friends around. All right, Facebook. Facebook is, I think we can consider a legacy platform. Um, There are so many folks on Facebook. I use Facebook primarily to connect personally and to share family updates. Um, We've got a lot of friends and connections through the years. So I don't share like every, you know, educational technology or media literacy article or something like that that I found on Facebook. I don't use it as a micro blogging platform in the same way that I've used Twitter, but it is really essential. And one of the things that I have grown to use Facebook more with are pages and groups. And so on my about page, or I guess after page, you know, I've got links. I have a whole media literacy inquiry project on conspiracies and culture wars. And so I've started a little private Facebook group there. Um, I have pages for the the, uh, podcast that my wife and I started in January is Empty Nesters, Wes and Shelley Share. Um, We have a a month, a weekly, we're taking a a month off for the summer, but the EdTech Situation Room is a podcast that I do with my friend Jason Neifer up in Montana um, online. And so anyway, those things have pages, but I really think Facebook is still relevant. It's important. And being able to use pages and groups kind of allow for some channeling of some specific content um, that I find to be really beneficial and, and wonderful. Instagram is also fantastic. Of course, Instagram, all posts are led with pictures. Um, I primarily use two channels here, a personal channel. I share up just all kinds of stuff. I'm, I'm an oversharer, if you haven't figured that out. Um, and then I also have a cooking channel, and, I, and it's called Cook with Wes. And I love to share cooking and especially barbecue and things like that. And so I really think Instagram is a great platform to still be on. LinkedIn is one that I've been a member of, but until recently didn't really share a whole lot. It's the professional network. And so it's really good for professional networking. Um, But as Twitter is waning in popularity and use and people are looking for other solutions, I am seeing many people that I know using LinkedIn to do a lot more sharing. And so I am sharing more on that platform as well. Now, TikTok is probably the most controversial. I mean, Facebook and other social media platforms are too. But um, because it's owned by China, And because it's so popular with youth, because of artificial intelligence, and because of security concerns, you know, we've got uh, states in the United States that are, you know, passing laws that are specific to TikTok now. And um, we've got a lot of concerns that we've had. We've had these for for a number of years. So I'm just using TikTok right now to share cooking stuff. Um, I would really, really caution all of us as teachers to 
to be very, very careful whenever we bring live content from a social media channel into class. Um, it is just it is so potentially... There's, there's a lot of potential inappropriate content that's out there uh, that can be very disruptive. And so if you are going to have conversations with students about these kinds of platforms, I think it's very advisable to use screenshots and to not be bringing live content in. But anyway, I've experimented a little bit with TikTok and cooking is, is how I'm using it. But I think it's still, it's a very important platform. It's hugely important uh, socially, culturally, and politically here in 2023. And so I think it's important to understand the platform. Platform. And one of the ways we understand these platforms better is by using them ourselves. Um, Twitter. So Twitter has been my absolute favorite platform. I still love it. I'm so sad to see the things that have happened over the past year. I probably created somewhere between eight and ten Twitter accounts over the years, um, and I'm using four primarily now. I have a primary W. Fryer account. I have a Cook with Wes account uh, where I share stuff. Um, I do a lot of digital storytelling, and so I have a passion project called Story Chasers that I still post on, and then I have um, a channel called Pocket Share because I have written and continue to write uh, about Christian and faith and media sharing and so I you know create inf- info pics about bible verses and things like that and I share that on a, on a, a separate channel but I anticipate it sometime like I said either Twitter completely going away or or things just getting so bad that I make that decision to say I'm done with Twitter. But at this point, it's still a platform where I, I connect with people, I get good ideas there, I share, but I, I think that it, it's probably waning in its use. Okay, uh, let's talk about new platforms. So Mastodon, I think I signed up for Mastodon in 2017. This is a federated platform. And it's one that a lot of people have heard about as a result of Twitter's demise. Um, It is open source, but it is a little more challenging in order to get on board. They have done some things recently, like in the past few months, um, to make it easier to just sign up for an account. But you have to, in the past, you had to find a hosting account that you could sign up with. Um, And then just like email is federated, because you could have Gmail or Hotmail or Yahoo Mail or whatever, and email interoperates, Mastodon is is set up the same way. But it's very Twitter-like as a microblogging platform. The icon there for Toot is my favorite um, iPhone app that I use for uh, Mastodon. But I really, really like Mastodon, and I've invested a considerable amount of time in Mastodon. And that's the thing. These platforms, and especially as you start with them, are not necessarily going to just become immediately wonderful. You're going to have to invest some time in following people who have similar interests because that's one of the best ways that you train these algorithms and and shape them so that they're going to provide and show you information that is helpful to you that's interesting to you. Blue Sky is one of the new platforms that I have joined just in the last couple months, I guess. It is still, as I record this in July of 2023, invitation only. So you have to find someone who has been on the platform. I think it's like every two weeks, uh, people get an invitation code to share. So I think uh, maybe I've been on for a couple months because I think I've shared like four different invitation codes that other people have used in order to join. But this was created by um, the um, the, the co-creator, Jack Dorsey, who, who was the co-creator of Twitter. Um, he started this before he left Twitter and sold Twitter. And so this is also federated, and there are ways that you can take your data with you. And I find this to be a more user-friendly experience than Mastodon in terms of getting going, but it's still limited. One of the things I'll talk about later are lists, and this does not use lists at all. Lists are a really important way that I curate different kinds of content. And so, anyway, Mastodon, uh, or sorry, Blue Sky um, is another platform that I think, as an early adopter, it's great to be a part of, but it is a smaller community. Alice Keeler is a teacher, an educator, who is doing some great work in networking folks on Blue Sky um, and... um, you know, it's finding lists of educators. And and I think I probably will put those links here on the Google site where wfriar.me slash ideas so that you can connect. Because what's one of the things when you join? Like, well, where are the teachers? How do I connect? And the hashtag edusky, E-D-U-S-K-Y, is the one that Alice is encouraging people to use on Blue Sky. And and using hashtags like that's a great way to connect with other people who share a similar interest. K-12 leaders. This is one that has 
been around for a number of years. I know this because, or I know about this because of uh, Carl Hooker, who is an absolutely wonderful educator from South Texas. Um, this is a network that is specific for teachers. So there's an app. You can get get to it from the web. Um, I guess I didn't mention this, but Blue Sky, you can only access through the app. Uh, Mastodon is web-based. There are apps that you can use. Um, K-12 leaders, you, you know, you can do both of those things. But I've been sharing in this network, and in this community, I really limit my sharing to things that are very, you know, educational specific. So I don't tend to, like, throw my cooking stuff or, or other things, you know, into, into this particular channel. Um, but I think this is a great uh, social network to join and to um, invest in in terms of our time. And, and, and our energy. Here's the brand new one. This one just started in the last couple weeks. Um, this is called Threads. This is the one that Mark Zuckerberg, um, you know, Facebook is now called Meta. So the Meta company has started it as, quote, a Twitter killer. Um, it is very, very Twitter-like. One of the things that's unique about it is it's connected to Instagram. And so you use your Instagram account to initially connect to it. You don't need an invitation code. You can just sign up. And there have been millions and millions of people signing up and people are wondering, is this going to be the Twitter killer that people are going to, you know, abandon Twitter for threads? Currently, again, as of July of 2023, I've read that um, Meta is going to try to reduce the amount of politics and the polarized content that is shared on the platform and make it more about conversations. Again, we don't know which platforms are going to succeed and which ones are going to struggle or just go away entirely, and that's why diversification is good. But um, Eric Kurtz is doing some great work connecting educators on threads. If you don't follow Eric, he is a tremendously prolific and generous sharer of ideas, especially Google-related stuff. And so I'll add a link to um, his doc that he, I think, or maybe Google Sheet that he's maintaining, because just like Alice Keeler has been doing on Blue Sky, Eric Kurtz is doing a great job on threads connecting educators, and it's a great way you can submit your own you know threads channel link so that other people can connect to you you can connect to them and start having conversations and connecting with with other teachers all right so let's talk a little bit about workflows. Um, I have used a variety of different note-taking apps over the years back in the day in like the you know mid 2000s when web 2.0 was taking off. You know, I became an Evernote user and was putting all of my you know, all of my notes into Evernote. I've used Google Docs a lot and still do, but I'm an iPhone user, and so the Notes app is one of the most important apps that I use in order to share content. And so, what I'd like to actually do right now is kind of jump out of my presentation here, and I'm going to see if it's the best way to do this. I'm going to um, share with you my phone. I don't have too bad of a desktop here. And so, let me see. I can make myself a little bigger. Not that, who cares? Uh, and let me just let me kind of just show you what this looks like. So over here. Um, I don't think I've shared this yet. This is an article that I found um, on one of my social networks. This is a Reuters article from today talking about India launching their new rocket and their lander because they're going to be um, hopefully successfully landing on the south pole of the moon on August 23rd, which we're going to be in school. Isn't that going to be awesome to be able to talk about? I love talking about space with my students. So this is a link. And what I've done... And I've already formatted this, is I have copied the title of the article there. And then I said, by hashtag Reuters. As you're using different social platforms to tag people, you can use their exact addresses. And when, we, when I was pretty much just using Twitter, that was a little more simple. But what I do as a technique now is usually put a hashtag and then use the name of the news source there. It's important to cite our sources. I've got the link to the article, and then I have hashtags down here at the bottom, um, some of which are just hopefully so other people can discover this. And then one thing I don't have in this presentation, and I can't do everything in this presentation related to this, but if this, then that... It's a really powerful platform, and I have a script that when I use the hashtag Wonderlink, 
on and it's worked on Twitter and I've, and I've been working to shift that to Mastodon, it automatically puts that link in a Google Doc for me. Um, I have the same thing happening uh, for the EdTech Situation Room. So as an example, let me do that. I'll put the EdTech SR. I like how notes will save the hashtags. And I can also then search for those so that um, I can find, find these things later. Okay, so here is the post that I'd like to share. I'm going to copy that. I'm using the Notes app really as my you know, place to draft my post. And what I'm going to do now is go into my folder where I have my social media sharing um, apps for these different websites. Now, I'm not going to put this one, this particular link, uh, on Instagram, and I'm not going to put it on Facebook, um, because this is like a microblogging sharing link, but I am going to put it on these other platforms. So, um, here we've got uh, Mastodon, which I'm using, Toot. So, I'm going to click on Toot, and I'll click that I want to post a Toot, and I'll paste that. Um, there's a 500 character limit for a shorter post like this. I'm not going to run into that difficulty. One of the things that I've done for myself to kind of keep track of these limits, these different platforms have different limits to how much text you can have. And I'll share in a later demo here. I don't, want to, I don't know if, how long this is going to go. I don't want this to go longer than 45 or 60 minutes. But Mastodon is limited to 500 characters. Threads is the same. Blue Sky is less. It's 300 characters. Twitter limits you to 280 characters. Um, and then LinkedIn is 700. Instagram and Facebook are really, really big. And so for most posts I have, I don't run into that limit. But when I do run into the limit because I have a longer post I want to share, I will use an app to split the text up into pieces. And that's called a thread when you have several pieces. So <laughs> anyway, for this shorter post, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> goodness, it's not that big of a deal. All right, so I have just shared to uh, Mastodon. Now let's go here to Blue Sky, and I'll go ahead and click on Post. Again, I'm not going to have to reformat my post. I'm just using the hashtag for Reuters. I can tap to add a link card, because that's something that Blue Sky uh, will do, is it will create that as an image, and then I'll go ahead and post that. It, it actually uploads that link card there um, as a, I can refresh my page, as like a screenshot um, that goes with your post. All right, so I post to Blue Sky. I'm going to skip Facebook. I'm going to go to Twitter. Um, as I mentioned, I use several different Twitter accounts. Uh, I guess. Oh, that tech situation. Maybe I didn't mention too. So I have five, five different Twitter accounts. This is just my main Twitter account. Um, so I'm just going to post here. And, you know, if I wanted to, instead of hashtag Reuters, I could go ahead and use at Reuters. And that's going to actually tag them. This takes a lot longer to do on every platform, so I really don't mess with that. Sometimes on Twitter, when I know what that news agency or that author's actual Twitter ID is, I'll put that in. But again, you can spend a ridiculous amount of time doing this. And this may even seem ridiculous to people who are watching this. Like, good grief, Wes, why the heck are you, you know, sharing this in so many different places? Um, so here I am on Blue Sky. Here's my news feed. I just tap here in the middle and tap and paste. Again, it loads a little preview with an icon or a picture from that. And then I click post. And now that's posted to K12 leaders. And then I can come over to LinkedIn. And I click on post. Now, sometimes I'm going to have a screenshot and other things. This is an example of just like a very simple article that I'm sharing. Now let's open up threads. Go ahead and click in the middle on post. Paste, it's going to create that little thumbnail. And now I've po posted that onto threads. Okay, and I'm going to stop. I'm not going to put it on TikTok because TikTok, I do, I do cooking stuff. So I shared that on six different platforms. But that workflow is the one that I am using constantly now. I am creating the share, the, the, the formatted post that I want to share, which a lot of times for an article is like the article and the author, the link, and then hashtags. And then I'm just going to copy and paste that from my notes app um, into the social media app where I want to share it. One of the things I learned a number of years ago was that if you compose your post entirely inside your app, depending on what app it is, sometimes the app will quit. And man, that is just terrible to you know, lose um, your um, lose your entire 
composed post. And so the way to circumvent that is to use a different note-taking app. And I'm, again, I'm using notes uh, for Apple in order to do that. Okay. I think actually here in a little bit, um, this was uh, shared on Mastodon uh, yesterday, and this is the Center for an Informed Public. I had a chance to um, go to Seattle and participate in a wonderful workshop, and they posted about our workshop, which was the, called the Finnish Ed Workshop. It was uh, educators from Finland sharing their lessons learned in the ways that Finland has integrated media literacy skills right into their core curriculum at all grade levels and what that looks like. And so this is an article that I think I want to post and share. But I'm going to go ahead and jump back over to my presentation now in Google Slides. Um, and we'll go ahead and continue because um, I think I probably just need to do one more demo and I need to make this a little bit faster. Okay, link tree. Uh, when I am putting a link into um, Instagram specifically, you can't click links on Instagram. So let me flip over here to my phone again. And maybe it's going to be a little less distracting to hide that. Okay, so here's Instagram. This is my personal Instagram channel. And so, what's well, an example? All right, I shared this uh, recently. Reasons to be cheerful. Um, the <laughs> former lead singer of the Talking Heads um, did an album, like his eighth album or something, and created this website, um, which is, I, I said, in a world filled with lots of bad news, consider checking out the website, Reasons to be Cheerful, and it's reasons to be cheerful dot world. Um, here's the problem. You can't, you can't click the link. I'm, I'm tapping with my thumb, and, and it doesn't let me in Instagram click the link. So what do you do? Well, there's a wonderful app that is called Linktree. And so here on my Instagram channel, if you look below my description, there is a link that says Linktree. And so you can click here, and what this allows me to do except cookies, is to just put links to different things that I'm talking about. And so uh, look at that. Oh, let's say revolution. Huh. Okay, I guess I didn't share that. So this will be a good example of me putting that in because I didn't actually sh I didn't actually share that one. So um, what I need to do is get the link and copy it. If I go back. Here's the here's the post, okay, that I that I that I put in some different places. And I'll tap the link. This is the actual link that I want people to be able to get to from my Instagram post. So I will copy this post and what I'm going to do is go into my social folder. And on the second page here, I've got a link to Linktree. Linktree is entirely free to use. You can pay to upgrade. I haven't done that. I'm going to click Add new link, use URL from clipboard, allow paste. And then that exact link to this website comes in here and it's going to post. And so now it's there. And so if I go back to Instagram and do this again, all right? So here's my Instagram channel. And I think I might've even said link in my profile. I didn't put it, did I? No, I didn't say. It. Yeah, I did. Link in my profile. See, and I forgot to do it, but this is good. I can show it now. Um, when I click here on link tree, what's going to be at the top now is going to be my new link. Look at that. Home reasons to be cheerful. And so anybody who visits that can click on it and there they can go and read these very positive articles that are on this website. Okay. So reason for doing this is that a specific limitation of the platform Instagram is that when you put a hyperlink inside a post or inside a comment, people cannot tap it and click it. You would have to, um, I mean, you could do a screenshot of it and there's ways now with, you know, the iPhone photos to be able to, you know, have the phone, it's called OCR, optical character recognition, and it'll translate it into the link and whatever, but it's, it's not easy. So what's easier is to use a tool like Linktree where people can click on it and then they can go to your link. Okay. So, yay. All right. That's Linktree. Uh, okay. Let's talk about a multi-part thread share. Now, the bummer of this is the app I use to do this, the, the, the issue is this. Different social media platforms, microblogging platforms like I'm talking about, have limits to how much text that you can put. Therefore, 
if you want to say more than say 500 characters on Blue Sky or on Mastodon, you have to create a thread. You have to post a, you know, a second post, reply to that post. And then it is visible to others who click that post because they can view the thread. The app that I use now is called Text Split and it's off the App Store. So I have it on my phone, but you can't download it. And I honestly don't even know what happened to it, why it went away. I love this app. Um, and so you can use some other tools. The one that I am showing you here on this slide is called Online Text Tools. It's onlinetexttools.com slash split hyphen text. And so you can take a block of text and then you can, um, you know, choose how many characters you want to have in each one of your chunks, and, and then you can you can show that. Let me show you an example of what this looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and exit here. Um, I'm going to go to uh, Mastodon. Let's show Mastodon. I could show this on Twitter too, but you know, here is Mastodon, and um, let's find a post that has, okay, this is a pretty big one. This is a thread of my notes from this Teaching for Resilience Finnish Education workshop from the University of Washington. This is from the beginning of June. And so here was the first post that I have four pictures and then here's a link. But as I scroll down here, which face is real? There's the link. Now we were hearing from Miko Salo uh, from Finland, um, who is the founder of Faktabar, which is Factbar and is both in English and in Finnish. And anyway, you can see all of these notes. Now, this is a little bit different because I was attending a multi-day workshop or conference. And so I was trying to share my notes from the conference and create a thread of those. Uh, so I'd be able to refer to these later and other people would too. But this is an example of of a thread. This is a pretty extensive thread, okay? But by finding the first post in the thread, you can find the rest of the content. Uh, let me show another example. So I'm going to go to Twitter now, and um, I'm going to find one that I started with one uh, something that said like one of two. Okay, here's an example. This is actually a preview of what I'm doing right now. So a couple days ago, I wrote, I am working on a new media share. I'm going to title Social Media Diversification. And this is like my brainstormed rough draft <laughs> that I made for this presentation. But notice how it says one of two up here at the top. So when I go down below, it says two of two. I'm going to create a Google Slideshow, record a narrative screencast, blah, blah, blah. So these two things are connected. And then last night, after I finished my slides, I went ahead and added another thread to that, except it, you know, it didn't have a number. Um, but 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 um, that's what I want to show you, okay? I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, so uh, again, let's pop over here to my iPhone. And what I uh, need to do, of course, is figure out what it is that I want to share. Now, again, if you, and I pinned these at the top, here are the limits. So when I go over 280 characters for Twitter, I'm going to have to, to break, break this up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go over to that website because I want to share this. This is the, this is the link. Uh, not that one. Okay, here's the link to the Educators Gather for Finish Ed Workshop. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this link. I'm going to start a new note here in the Notes app. And I'm going to give credit to the author. So this is by... Uh, this is the University of Washington. I don't know if I, if I did, if I've done UW. Um, they have a center for an informed public. So I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna call it Tip Teachers. Tip Teachers are, are teachers for an informed public. That is their educational group. All right. So I've got educators gather. So the title. I'm gonna copy the link. And I'm gonna paste it in. Okay, but now, and then I can do some hashtags as well. Um, I'm going to want to talk about this on an upcoming episode of the EdTech Situation Room, so I'm going to put that hashtag in there. Um, I'm going to put in media literacy. Again, I like this about the Notes app because I've used these hashtags before, and so I'm clicking, I'm just starting to type the hashtag, and then I'm doing the full one. Um, okay, so that's probably good. Now, I'm going to add a little commentary um, about this. Um, so... This is a press release about a wonderful workshop I attended in early June at the University of Washington, comma, learning about the ways, 
the Finnish government has integrated media literacy skills into their required curriculum at all levels, period. Lots of great links and super resources here, exclamation point. Okay, so I like to dictate because it's faster to do that. Um, I need to also check out and follow Center for an Informed Public and Tip Teachers, exclamation point. Okay, sometimes I'm gonna have to do a little formatting. And I know this is just making for very exciting audio if you're listening to the audio version of this. Because you can't really see me doing this. But I am editing my text. And now I'm going to go find these links. That is Center for an Informed Public. Okay, so I'm going to, I can just shorten the link. It's www.cip.uw.edu. Honestly, though, what I'm doing right here is extremely powerful. I am sharing hyperlinks, and by clicking on those links, anybody who comes to this post is going to be able to connect to that resource. And at the bottom of the page, probably connect to their social media profiles. It is just being able to share hyperlinks like this is incredibly important and powerful. All right, tipteachers.com. That's how you can uh, get to their website. And I've really, really enjoyed being able to connect with tip teachers. <laughs> That's interesting. So that website's not coming up right now. I have a link to their website on my media literacy page. I maintain a website called medialiteracy.westfriar.com where I have a lot of my media literacy resources. And I'm just going to make, oh, that's right. It's tipteachers.net. This is why it's so important to preview your links before you share them because you don't want to share a hyperlink to the wrong place. Um, one of the most sort of infamous examples of that was whitehouse.gov, right? Uh, and I'm not going to say this is all trans this is all transcribed and everything but if you type the wrong white house you know at least in the past you know you could end up at a pornography site instead of ending up you know at at the actual you know white house official government website so always test your links don't put a link in that you just type preview it make sure you get it right and that's an example because their website is not tipteachers.com it's tipteachers.net um, and I would have messed that up if I hadn't previewed it. That's why I wanted to kind of show this whole process. Okay, so here's this long post. I've got three different hyperlinks. I've got hashtags. I want to share this entire thing. So here's the problem. This is more than 500 characters. I'm going to copy the whole thing. And this is where I use my social media uh, post text limit. So I'm going to put share to Mastodon and threads first, which are both limited to 500. So if you can find, if you know of a different app that does this now, that will be fantastic. This is the one I've been using. It's called Text Split. So the first thing I do is I put in my character count. So 500 characters, and then I'm going to put in my new text. And so I paste it in, allow paste, and I click in the upper right corner, and then it splits it. This isn't that long. This is just a two-part... Um, uh, thread, but look at how lovely this is. It has put one of two, two of two, and I can simply tap copy, and now I'm ready to go with both of these. So I can come here to um, my Toot app for Mastodon. I can paste that in. There's the first one. I'll go ahead and do Blue Sky here at the same time. Paste again. These are the first of two posts that I'm going to be doing. Oh, now that's interesting. Huh. Did I mess that up? Let me go back. What did I mess up? Here I am just buzzing along. Oh, that's right. Blue Sky is 300. Well, that's an example of this. Threads is the other one that's 500. So I may change the order. But do you see what happened here? I tried to post it. I'm 194 characters over the limit because I'm posting too many characters into a post for Blue Sky. Okay. So, and I may, I may reorder my... Um, oh, I'll do it right now. Because both Threads and Mastodon are 500. Maybe it's going to make sense for me to do those together, to do them first. Okay, so let's go to threads. I'll go ahead and click post, and look at this. It's going to allow me to post. Now, it does, it shows, yeah, up in the corner, see the six? I have six characters remaining, so I have 494 characters, I, uh, I guess, um, in this post. So go ahead and post that, 
and here's the, there, there's the first of two posts. Okay, so now let's come on back to my TechSplit app, and I'm going to tap Copy on the second part. Now I can go into my Mastodon app, find my link. Here it is. That was the first one. Now I click below it, add another, and I click paste. And now I have pasted that as a thread underneath it. Now one disadvantage of this is if I don't do the hash, I did the hashtags in this case higher. If I wait and do the hashtags at the end, they won't go in the first part of the post. So sometimes it's good like that to have your hashtags earlier. All right, so here again is my first post. This is in threads. I'm gonna click at the bottom on the second icon that looks like a comment icon and I'm gonna paste and post, okay? And now I've got that one posted in there. Now. Uh, let's go back to our limits because we have Mastodon and Threads allowing for 500, but look, Blue Sky has a maximum of 300 characters. So I'm going to, again, open up my sharing app, but this time I'm going to change the character count from 500 to 300, and I'll tap up there in the corner. Ah, and look now, I have it automatically broken into three different parts. So now I can tap copy. I can go into Blue Sky. Start a new post, paste, and now that's going to be below the limit. This first one has 10 characters left. So there's the first of three posts. Now I'm going to go back here, copy my second post. Sometimes I'll pull down to refresh so that I can see the first one. You can't pin a post right now on Blue Sky at the top. So there's the first of three. There's the second of three. Now I'll go back to my text split and copy the third, which has the links. I'm going to reply to the second thread with my third one, there's three of three. I can choose which one I want to add the link card to, because you only can have one link card in Blue Sky, and there you go. Now I have a three-part thread posted inside Blue Sky. It's the same content. It's the same content that I posted on Mastodon, the same content that I posted over on Threads, okay? Um, I think I'll go ahead and post to Facebook. I don't have, I won't have that limit. Um, What I actually think I'm going to do, uh, and I'll just demo this, is I'm going to post this to uh, one of my pages. And so I'm going to go to my pages. I'm going to go to my speed of creativity, which I set up quite a while ago. And when I sometimes when I share an EdTech article like that, I'll do that here. And I'm going to go ahead and post it here. Um, on my speed of creativity page, okay? Um, if I want to amplify that and, you know, share that here on my actual regular channel, which I, which I will sometimes do, I won't switch into that particular channel. What I'll do is go down here and now I'm interacting as myself. Uh, I'll like the post and I can go ahead and click share and I can just click share now. And what that does is it's going to share that original post, okay, from Speed of Creativity Learning, but it's like, this is like a retweet, but it's in Facebook, and I'm sharing that particular post from that particular page, okay? All right, uh, so we've done um, Macedon, Threads, Blue Sky, Facebook, let's do Twitter. I've got to change my number count, so I don't have 300, I have 280 characters. Again, it's going to be three parts, but if I hadn't changed this, it, it would be too much um, and because it, it can't handle 300, it's got to have 280. So I make sure I'm in the correct Twitter account, and I am. This is my, my personal profile. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and post. Again, this is going to be the first of three parts. So I click post. I go back to text split, copy the second part, this is where I'm going to go to my profile, and I'll go ahead and select it. So here's the post. I want to reply to myself, so I'm going to click Reply, Paste. There's the second of, thir of three, and now I go back to 
my text split app, capture the third part, and I'm going to add another tweet, and I'm going to post that in as well. Okay? So, uh, I'm not going to do Instagram. I do want to do K-12 leaders, um, and I don't actually have... The K-12 leaders has a, has a longer uh, text limit as well, so I usually don't have to split those up. So I'll just type in here. It'll tell me if I've exceeded it, but I don't think I will. I'll go ahead and post it. So now I've got this shared into K-12 leaders. Okay. Um, and then I can share it into LinkedIn. I'm not going to share it into TikTok because, again, TikTok is all my cooking stuff, and that's it. I don't share anything except cooking there. All right. LinkedIn's got a long... Um, LinkedIn has a long list uh, or has a lot of text that you can put in there as well. All right, I think I need to finish my demos because I've been going for 50 minutes and I said I didn't want to go longer than like 45 minutes or an hour. So, oops, let's make myself smaller. Okay. I think that's probably going to be it for the demos. Uh, but hopefully those workflows are helpful to you. Again, if you know an app that is still available on the App Store, like TechSplit, let me know what it is. I'd love to share it. I'm so so thankful that I have this free app that does this for me and allows me to break longer posts that need to be in multi multiple parts, um, allows me to break those up. But uh, anyway, I'm sure that other people hopefully are going to come up with apps, but there is a website that you can use to do the same thing. Okay, uh, I'm not going to demo this, but um, I, I'll probably do a, I'll do a separate video about it. But I have been using Flipboard for a long, long time. It is a wonderful digital newspaper. It is my favorite way to read content on my phone uh, as well as on my iPad. And so you can create magazines, and I've have one called iReading that I flip a lot of things into. I also use Pocket when I'm going to read something later. And I also have Pocket read things to me. I've used some different apps for that. But those are great apps, and I still continue to use those. And Flipboard not only supports Twitter and Twitter lists, but it also supports um, Mastodon and Blue Sky. And so it'll be, I would expect they're going to add support for threads as well. Um, so that's, that's great. I've shown you hashtags. Hashtags are really important. Use hashtags both for yourself to find your own content later. Like I'll go in and search Mastodon on my own channel for EdTech SR. And those are the things that I want to share in our weekly web show that happens usually when we're not taking a month off for the summer. Um, on Wednesday nights when I'm doing that podcast. And so it's a way of trapping information personally uh, to be able to find it later, but it's also a way of enhancing the discoverability of your content so that other people can potentially find it, use it, and connect to you, and, and we can learn together. Um, lists, this is again something else that I need to do a separate demo about, but I have absolutely, positively loved using Twitter lists and that's one of the biggest reasons I am very reticent or reluctant to give up Twitter because doggone it, I've invested hours and hours building this, these lists. As an example, my media literacy list has 339 different folks and organizations that are working in media literacy. 40 different people follow that list. You can follow that list if you want. Just go to twitter.com slash wfryer slash lists. And I've got, you know, like 100 lists. But you can find media literacy. Um, Macedon has support for lists. But right now, and I haven't checked this in the last month, but the last time I was playing with this, it only supported private lists. So I couldn't share my lists with you like I can with Twitter. And I really, really hope that threads and these other tools are going to support lists and they're going to allow allow for um, the public sharing of lists because it's one of the best ways to be able to introduce people to other people and organizations and groups and content and really facilitate that networking and sharing aspect. So I, I hope that they're going to do that. I'm still using my Twitter lists, but you know, right now Mastodon is limited in its use of, of lists, and I don't think that Threads or Blue Sky have lists at all. I could be wrong about that, and that could change tomorrow. But hopefully, and hopefully it will. Hopefully they're going to support public lists like Twitter does. Um, I also use Wakelet. Uh, I've been using that more in the last year um, for this Conspiracies and Culture Wars Media Literacy Inquiry Project that I've been working on since 2019. I'm hoping to make that into a book in the next year or so. Um, I have different Wakelet collections 
collections of books that are related to that media literacy project, podcasts that I've listened to that I really recommend, projects that students have done, articles that I've read. And so Wakelet is a really great social media sharing platform. I am a little bit less familiar with it than I am with things like Google Docs, um, but it's also a workflow that as I find an article that relates, and I use the hashtag ConCW for conspiracies and culture wars, you know, I will share that out to some of these social media platforms like I've just sh- shared with you. I might put that into my private Facebook group, and then I might also put that into Wakelet. Um, again, as a way for me to curate that and find it later, and then also to be able to share that with others. So the overall thesis, and if you have stayed with me for 54 minutes and 53 seconds, thank you. Um, overall, I think we need to invest and diversify our use of social media for creative and rewarding ideological returns. In other words, it is absolutely fantastic and wonderful to be able to use social media platforms to connect with others, to be able to share ideas, to be able to learn together and to discover and to be curious and just, you know, it it is absolutely, it can be absolutely fantastic, but it requires some investment. It requires some time. And so I hope that this presentation has been helpful to you as you use social media platforms, wonder what the heck is this new thing, threads or K-12 leaders or whatever, and you wonder, is it worth investing your time? My encouragement to you is to try some of these new platforms and then really seek out other educators and other people who are interested in the things that you're interested in because that's, that's where so much of the good mojo comes from, is from being able to connect with folks who are passionate and interested in the things that we're interested in. Um, and that is really positive. So thank you so much for your attention. Uh, again, you can find a copy of this entire presentation at my Google site, which you can link to from the shortened URL, wfriar.me slash ideas. I am Wes Fryer. You can find all of my social media profile links and more at westfriar.com slash after. Have a fantastic day and good luck diversifying your own use of social media in the days and weeks ahead. I look forward to connecting with you. Good luck.